Welcome everyone. Thank you for carving out some time to join us for today's webinar. My name is Renee Childress and I'm the Marketing Assistant here at PCS Adventures. Today we are hosting Engagement Strategies for STEM Education presented by Jim Schmidt and an expert panel of educators. Jim is a STEM education veteran with over 20 years of experience in public school education and administration. Thank you, Renee. I, 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 thanks for the, the wonderful <laughs> Uh, welcome and appreciation, but it's it's really more today. It's more about who the people are on the panel that we're really can, we're really interested in because these are expert educators and they've done a great job. And it, the, today we are really going to talk about the engagement of students and how STEM education can be implemented and what really gets kids excited about what STEM is. Uh, we have uh, someone from the elementary classrooms and also someone from a charter school that is primarily secondary. So we'll kind of get a broad view of what STEM is in those different areas. And I think you'll really enjoy what they have to say. So well, I'll, I'd like to introduce to the panel first before we really get started. We have Dory Atterbury and Jill Janicek. Uh, they teach first and second grade respectively at Galileo STEM Academy, which is an academy just not just on the outskirts of Boise and Eagle. And uh, between the two of them, they have 55 years of teaching expertise. <laughs> that makes us sound really old. <laughs> well, not really, because they told me I had 30 years all by myself. <laughs> and then we have Guy Falconer is a secondary teacher at Sage International School. It's a charter school. He's been teaching for 20, 21 years, and currently Guy teaches in the IB Design Technology and coordinates the career program at Sage. Uh, but before we get started, I'd like to give you just a brief overview of what PCS is and how this all came about, because we are uh, a private company, of course, and we started with the smallest, minute little incubator <laughs> in Wilder, Idaho, if you will, from Pat McShane, who started uh, Pat's Computer School in 1988, and he did it out of a need to get kids excited about science and what they could do with science and not just memorizing what science was all about. So he wanted hands-on activities and he developed them PCS computer centers to help do that. So uh, kudos to him and he really got us started years and years ago. And we grew from a network of experimental learning centers in Idaho, Washington and California from that and into what we are today, uh, just creating solutions. In fact, we, we were talking earlier about how we kind of like, instead of Pat's computer school, I kind of like the problems, solutions, and challenges approach rather than just Pat's computer school. But it, it's nice that it has that acronym so we can use it either way. So, uh, but we have uh, over 7,000 sites in all 50 states and over seven, in and we're also present in uh, 17 other countries as well, uh, which says to me again that STEM is something that everybody needs. Uh, it's, it's something that is more core, I think, than uh, some people would like to think because you can't do anything anymore without STEM skills. Whatever the job is, it has STEM skills in, embedded into that occupation. So uh, the philosophy of hands-on projects that fuel passion for learning and lifelong learning, and that's really what STEM's all about. Uh, STEM is something that um, we probably have been doing it for years, but it never had that acronym. So really effective instructors were probably always teaching project-based learning, but now it has really become a methodology as, a pro as opposed to just a nice acronym. And uh, more and more schools, uh, more and more industries, uh, universities across the board are all interested in how we can get kids involved in STEM related learning activities. So that's kind of what we're about today. Uh, K-12 classrooms are, 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 are probably our primary market for PCS because uh, we do a lot of curriculum development for from our brick labs to robotics to engineering to just a, a variety of different curriculums that we offer. And we also have after-school programs. We are in libraries and uh, maker spaces. 
and we are very involved in the after school activities, uh, after school programs, as well as the technical uh, organizations, school organizations, and student organizations. So we've got FFA, Boys and Girls Clubs, 4-H, and, and a myriad of others that we are involved with. And the reason it works is because it is all hands-on. Kids like to do things. They don't like to sit and listen. So our, our activities really are focused on hands-on activities. Uh, to raise new questions, new possibilities, to, these are some things I came across the other day that I thought, you know, those really, if that's kind of the essence of what STEM is. So as you look at these definitions, when you're thinking about implementing your STEM program, you might give this some thought to think, this is what STEM really is about and how I can address these issues in, a STEM, in our program could help us ensure that STEM is part of our school culture. So with this, you've got to raise new questions, new possibilities to regard old problems from a new angle, requires creative imagination and marks real advance in science. I mean, just to think, when you think of STEM, it's, it's everything coming together and to solve a problem, it takes more than just science or math or engineering or technology. It also takes communication skills, collaboration, all of those things come together and that's how you really solve problems and that's really what STEM is about. And so I thought these two definitions, especially the one from Edwin from the Hubble uh, inventor, uh, what he had, had to say with the, using all five senses uh, to help man explore the universe and that kind of thing. So it really is more than just math and science, but, it, the, but those are two major components. So uh, with that, then going on to what is STEM in my mind, uh, I, I, I go back to looking at uh, what I remember in high school and the things that I remember in school generally, and, and even into elementary schools, I was talking about my sixth grade teacher the other day, uh, the things I remember about those classrooms were the hands-on activities. I don't remember the spelling lessons and the, everything else, but I remember the things that teachers had me do with my hands. That's what is recorded in my memory about what and how important school was. And I think that's what really kids look at today. And that's why they get so motivated when you as teachers and try to implement something that gets their hands on, their minds on, and then their hearts on. That's really what STEM in my mind is all about. So uh, it's an integrated approach. You know, we've, we've taught in silos for years and never the twain shall meet in some schools. <laughs> but we really want teachers and educators and administrators and parents and kids to think of an integrated process and make it relevant. When things are relevant, they're remembered. Test scores go way up when you make things relevant. So it's, it's a matter of getting kids tuned into what that processes and help other teachers understand and help yourself understand how can I bring this all together in a project that I can use all of the language arts, the math, the science, whatever it is, to make it a relevant project. And that's when you have, in my mind, that's what I remember in the projects that I did as a kid. Mm -hmm. That's what I really love doing. And I think that's what kids still love to do. Mm -hmm. So without any further ado, I'm going to Turn on to, uh, there's one more piece here about time management, I, but I'm hoping that you'll address that in your discussion as you go through when you talk about the different ways that you've organized it to manage time. Because the first thing that we always hear, and I've always heard this, and I've said it myself, where am I going to get more time to do this? How am I going to get this done? And plus, everything else that I have to do in the classroom. So my kids are on target with everything they have to know to move on to the next grade or to the next step in their lives, whatever the case may be. So it's really important to figure out how can I manage the time to get it all done. But when you start integrating things, it seems to work. So I'm going to leave that up to you to, to discuss uh, with your address to the our massive audience, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I want to first of turn it over to Dory to have her start with uh, what STEM means to her and how she how she handles STEM in her classroom. Okay, I'm Dory Atterbury, and I start my mornings in my class with my STEM and 21st Century Skills Centers, which I have build it, create it, make it, model it, practice it, and read it. Dory, can I interrupt? And what grade level do you? Work I am at first grade. 
okay. level. Thanks. And so that we do those these every morning for about 20 minutes because I'm usually not really available to teach those first 20 minutes of the day either. And so I had to find a way this would be perfect for me to put my STEM centers. Because the first 20 minutes you're doing attendance, you're doing lunch count, you're getting folders from kids, notes from kids and all that. And so this was a way for the kids to be engaged in activities with STEM. And for me to get things done, I can also pull kids over to help them with work that they need help with while their other kids are at the centers. So Build It is made up of the building blocks you see in the um, slides. The, I have big, a giant Jenga set is what those big blocks are. And then I have um, the Brick Lab is what they made builds with also. For creative, a lot of my kids use painting and they paint or they get clay out or they wanna use pastels, crayons, something like that to make something creative with. At Make It is a huge favorite center where it's all your recycled material, cardboard and everything, and they make whatever they want to make with it. And they're at the same center for the whole week. So if they don't get whatever they want to build done that first day, they can continue on it the next day. For the Model It Center, I have my first graders go down to the kindergarten classrooms and they help the kindergarten teachers with their students with whatever they want them to help with flashcards or helping kids read in a story to the kids, whatever they want them to do when they go down there. And practice it, I have the kids on iPads and they're usually doing math or science or reading activities and improving their technology literacy and then read it, they're just doing their reading that they need to do. And then every fall in October, we do the cardboard challenge. If you've seen Kane's Arcade, mm -hmm. which um, is about a little boy that was working <laughs> in his dad's, he's got a parts store in California and he's he builds things with cardboard and makes his arcade. And so we watch that and then my kids get inspired and build their own games that they want to build. And then we have other first grade classrooms and second grade classrooms. Mrs. Janice X comes to our arcade and they use some play money to play the games and everything. And then the money that my kids earn from the people that have played their games, they get to go to the second grade store, which Mrs. Janice can tell you a little bit about because they run the second grade store. So they earn money in first grade to spend at second grade store. So if you have a money system, you can up it by sending home a business license application for what they're selling and their projected profit. Parents have to sign that so they can't sell the jewelry. <laughs> and they also keep track of what they sell and then they reflect upon their store experience. And when they're shopping, they fill out a consumer sheet and they have to have a budget and they're not allowed to spend more than what they put in their budget. So it works nicely with Kane's Arcade. Cool. And the other thing that we use at our build is the Brick Lab and that's a great system, great material to use if you're trying to start STEM. I have two sets of the Brick Lab. So I have one that I've divided into individual tubs like little Gladware storage kits that I have enough for every child. So if we want to do a quick build or challenge, we can pass a kit out to each kid and then we can do the lesson that we want to do. And then I just have the big tub that we use to, <laughs> the big tub that they just use when they're at centers to build things. And so it's, it's an easy way to incorporate STEM or start STEM if you're just starting. And every time my kids have a problem, like, well, what would happen if this, we always just, well, let's get some bricks and build to something to see what might work or what we could get to work for that. So when you were started with the bricks, did how did you feel about bringing new materials and was it a because oftentimes new materials can be kind of intimidating did the bricks ever seem intimidating to you they did not see seem intimidating to me in fact when i made my individual tubs i had my class do it but i took one big brick lab and i dumped it on the floor across my room and it stayed there for a week for us to pass it because at first the kids had to sort all of it by color then they would take a pile of the color and they had to sort it by size, all the two by fours, all the two by six, all the two by eight. And then when we had everything sorted, I would say, okay, everybody go to the yellow pile and get three two by twos. And so we did that until we got all of them divided <laughs> to mm -hmm. all the kits. So cool. it was a huge thing that we worked on for a long time to get the kits made. So. The interesting thing that I noticed when you were talking about that was that you were using some technical language, really, the two by twos and the two by fours <laughs> and two by sixes. And that is the description part of the bricks, yes. which is all part of STEM, is learning how to use the vocabulary to describe what you're doing. Yes. So the nomenclature. Yeah. nomenclature. Yeah. I mean, they like that just, word. You no just rattled it off little, like everybody knew what well, we were talking and, about. No so. matter how young you are, it's cool to learn a big new word. Yes. They, some people think that 
the young ones can't learn all that vocabulary. Oh, but they can. Right. They oh, can, yeah, they can, and they love it. And they like to show it off. You know? Yes, yeah, so <laughs> they know it. <laughs> so, Jill, I, you want, anything else, Dory, that you want to mention? or? No, I'll or? still... Oh, still have more things to talk about. Yeah. Um, another resource that I use for um, iSTEM is I do a lot of the project-based learning with some liter literacy and math units that are integrated together, and that's from the Math Excursions book, and they have those for kindergarten, first and second, and that's um, by Donna Burke and Alan Snyder and Paula Simons. We could put that up somewhere if you want to get that to me. But this is the one about the famous threesomes. And so it uses all the stories and rhymes with three characters, like three little pigs, the three little wolves. We have all of those stories. And we do a big chart we make up with all the characters on it. And we make math problems with it. We put a number line and a number grid for them to see the patterns and the connections of counting by three. And then we learn also some math games to play. And so there's about three math games we learn and they have to do some building. So they build a number house that they use while they're playing math games. And the other units I do from this curriculum. What? They play math games? Yes. <laughs> you can learn through games? Yes, that's something that sometimes has to be impressed upon administration. <laughs> we can learn with games. Yes, we can. So I do, um, in the fall, I do a wild things around Halloween unit where we do take the story where the wild things are and they make little wild thing costumes that they create and then they um, have to write story problems, math story problems. And then our next one that we'll be doing this spring will be the three billy goat scrap and they'll be building goats with potatoes <laughs> is what we do that with. And then they have to make, we do a paper mache map and then they build bridges to get the goats from one side to the other side. It's, so it's a great way to integrate language arts along with yes. the STEM activities. Yeah, all the building and creating that they do. And then we incorporate some math with it too. Cool. Very cool. And then um, this is a little girl in my class, and we're visiting Mrs. Janicek's class. This was at the end of our science unit. We were doing the new science unit for us from the um, Next Generation Science Standards. And it was about the, the cycles and systems. And we had done day and night, the moon phases, and the seasons. And each child had to choose one of those and then create an illustration or a poster for that. And then they wrote something that they were going to share with the second graders to tell them what they learned from it. And this little girl learned, was talking about the day and night. And so that's the system that she was sharing. And that was to go along with trying to do problem-based or project-based project -based assessment and problem-based assessment. So yeah, the next thing science we're doing is the sound and light. And my students are going to have to create things to communicate a message from one side of the room to the other side of the room so that they're always creating something to prove and, what they've learned. And what you left out was she had my second graders had to ask her first graders questions and the first graders answered them and the second graders loved it. They loved that they were like the teacher listening. They got to give them stickers for their posters. And it was cool. very fun. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's very motivating for them to teach an older student yes. something too. That's great. It sounds like I want to be in your class. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of fun. I, I used to teach first grade with Dory. Now I'm in second, and my daughter was in her class, so I can guarantee you her class is very hands-on and fun. So I kind of wanted to talk you through um, a project-based unit that incorporates the water cycle, which we had started learning with the weather. And we had a snow day where it snowed a whole bunch and everyone thought it should have been called a snow day. So we all were at school <laughs> and I decided to turn it into a day of snow. So we um, had to use our brick lab to build a snowflake. And PCS does have some activity cards that will show how to build things. Like here's the snowflake. My class had learned that it has six sides. Here's a snowman. But I don't show them these right away because their designs are really wonderful to hear about. Yeah, right. And the, the brick build always tells you so much more when they get to explain it. So we had these awesome snowflakes, so we made that the fence of our village. And then they built snowmen, but they built snow roosters, and there was a Seattle Seahawk <laughs> snowman. And <laughs> then they built the village, and they had to explain what the building was that they made. So then we I wanted to pull some writing into it, and... We read Snowflake Bentley for your literature, and this is about photographing the crystals of snowflakes. That's how they learned about the six sites. And then they had to write informational step-by-step -step directions using first, next, then, finally. 
the sequencing words. Yeah. And after they wrote about that, we kept it going by reading Snowman at Night, and I showed them how to make a snowman graphic organizer. And we love making different organizers in our classroom so that they can learn the parts of a paragraph. And they're getting pretty good at it. They, they know they have to write five sentences. So they got to write a story about their snowman, and they were very fun to hear, too. And then, it, it, because it was snowing very heavily that day, we did go outside and build a snowman. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> and one of our field trips in second grade is that we get to go to the watershed and learn about the Boise watershed and the water cycle and our drinking water and the water table and pollution. And it's a great How field the snowflake is that you catch on your tongue. Right, right. <laughs> And there was one day where the snowflake crystals were showing on their coats, so I made all second graders stay outside and stare at their coats for a while. <laughs> <laughs> and then Dory and I are working on a rubric that um, Boise State University sent us, one for grades three through five, and we are kind of revamping it for kindergarten through second grade. Cool, very cool. And for organization, Dory said she dumped them all out. I was a little intimidated by that, so <laughs> I kept mine in the tub the first year and let them dig. And you have to be ready for noise when they do that. But then I discovered I kind of like this drawer idea, and I taped the shape of the brick onto the drawers so that they could find the ones they want by nomenclature, <laughs> which is how many dots are on top of each brick. And one way people say we don't have enough time so we have to differentiate our reading we have to teach our children how to read so when i differentiate reading it's during stations and all of the students go to every station and that's where i can incorporate things like coding so that top picture with a little b that's called a b bot and you code it and we played a who would win game with animals they would have to code their bebot to land on an animal, then they rolled some dice and they had to compare which one had their greatest weight, length, or speed. And the dice would tell them which one they were comparing. And the bebots are available through Civil Air Patrol. You can pay a $35 lifetime membership fee and then you fill out a short grant form. I got two rechargeable bebots and two of those mats where the plastic lifts up and you can put things under to do, you can do vocabulary with your V-Bots. Or flashcards. Yeah, math. math flashcards. So, and then I just showed you some of the other stations. That's Osmo with the little letter tiles. And I organize my stations on the board. That's to the left of the slide and it's spring break. So math and spelling aren't filled out right now. <laughs> but I do the reading station and that's where I differentiate my reading. And I also have centers that always include free build brick lab because you would be amazed at how many soft skills are covered through free build. They, they want to work together. They want to share. They want to combine their projects. It's just a great thing to watch. Cool. Very cool. Now we're going to, thanks for that. But I'm, I'm so impressed because everything you do, and this is kind of a, not a very good cliche, <laughs> but you're building blocks for the next level yes. uh, yes. to move on. <laughs> but in, in, because it, it has to start somewhere, and the sooner we can get kids involved in STEM, uh, the more likely they'll continue on in STEM activities when they get into high school and into college, so or uh, a trade school, whatever the case may be. So STEM is math and science and technology is kind of intimidating in those words. But when you break it down as you have in your brick labs and in your stations, it's fun. Mm -hmm. Learning is fun. And you're learning all of these skills related to STEM and still getting all the other requirements done for your core requirements and for your testing. So that's that's huge for most anybody. Plus, all, as a parent, I want to make sure my kids can read. Of course. <laughs> yeah. That's a top and, and, priority. And understand math. Right. And, and yeah. math then becomes fun as opposed to this challenge of I'm afraid of math. Yeah. So when you can get them over that fear at that early, early age, we, we kind of get the battle won. Mm -hmm. And that, that sounds like you guys, you guys are doing a great job. So Well, in your curriculum, too, there's a lot mm -hmm. of reading and writing. Science is not just building. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
You, you yeah. both of you mentioned something too about uh, the motivation factor of the bricks. Right. I mean, Very I'm a, motivating. That I, I have a story that I was doing it. It was at an elementary school in Meridian. Mm -hmm. It's a district just next door to us here in, in West Ada. But I remember walking through the parking lot with a box of bricks. And I looked behind me, and I had 15 kids following. <laughs> get me in the get me in the building quick. <laughs> so it's it's amazing to me how motivating the bricks are, and the kids never seem to get tired of them. Right, and they're yeah. sad when they have to break them down. So yes. one thing that Dory and I do is we use the program Seesaw on the iPads, and they can take a picture of it, or they can uh. video their explanation. And then we can send it to their parents. Yeah. It's like so an electronic cool. journal. What a great idea. Portfolio yeah. form. Yeah. yeah. Then they can break it down without being sad. So now you're yeah. going to pass them on to Guy. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now the challenge is yours. Exactly. Exactly. And I, I can say, you know, speaking for all high school, you know, design teachers or math teachers or something, we appreciate what you do. So, so <laughs> it makes our job so much easier. <laughs> so. Um, I just I wanted to relate with you um, a couple of things, and um, that is STEM uh, does not have to be a formal piece in terms of your experience. Um, I do not have any kind of uh, degree in STEM. Um, my uh, experience comes from just life experiences. I'm a licensed pilot. Uh, I spent 25 years in construction management, teaching as my second career, um, and I just, through STEM, I was actually able to kind of bring all that together and um, able to relate that to the kids. Uh, some of us, they love to listen to my stories <laughs> and uh, can't believe it sometimes, but um, that's, you know, it. that's the kind of thing that you can actually bring um, to your classroom, so. The uh, the whole thing with the with the boots on the ground at Sage, we're an international baccalaureate school. Uh, we are we have a set curriculum that is required of us, but they don't tell you how to do it. They just say this is Here. what you need to do, and you figure it out. And so, uh, design technology was one of the ones that we one of the pieces of curriculum that we decided to take on. Um, and that was eight years ago. And looking at that, probably feeling like uh, some of these people in the uh, audience is, how do I do that? Yeah. And what I found was um, find a program that you can hang your ideas on. For example, like the PCS uh, pieces, where you can actually look at the kind of curriculum that they present to you and say, okay, great starting point how can i do and put my own spin on this mm -hmm. create it for my population and make it work yeah. um and uh you need to it, that makes it so much easier is if you have that starting point um so whether it's pcs or someone else out there that you can actually um uh develop your curriculum from it it uh, makes it so much easier um, the next slide I had was uh, um, this, what I find is that people have this assumption that STEM has to be uh, complicated. It has to be, if it isn't multidimensional and if it isn't, you know, all these things that um, people are expecting it to be, then it's not STEM. And I'm quite the opposite approach. I feel like it really just, if you can keep STEM simple, uh, maybe focusing on a particular idea or two, um, and then keep integrating it in different ways, you can still um, achieve what you have to do, but you do it at a level where kids can understand. They can break it down and you go, oh, seriously, that we we can do that kind of thing you know and all of a sudden it just it starts making sense so i i can't stress enough to uh keep it simple keep it simple keep it relevant for the kids and you're going to have a lot of success with it so um and then um as you guys pointed out uh in what you were saying is that um 
the whole process in this stem is a process it's never an end product yes you get little snowman but um it doesn't make any difference what the end product is it's the iterations of getting there um, that make stem very viable and relevant for the kids um you know it's it's really circular thinking right mm -hmm. you get to a certain point and um you know jim nice job on the bill but maybe if you try to do some things here you might be able to improve your product jim goes back kind of rethinks it and now he's going through that whole stem process again so um i tell my kids it's never uh don't ever worry about what the end product looks like so so it sounds like you're all pretty much using the the design engineering design process in your classrooms that that circular of like it could be how could you do this to solve this problem so they think about all those possibilities and then well oh, that didn't work so let's try something different and so forth and so on so in it and I, I love the fact that you've made it pretty simple right it, it, it as a guy mentioned it doesn't have to be this complex project uh, and stems really involved in everything that we touch and do and and I think most people adults included don't really know haven't come up with that conclusion in their head that that's what STEM is all about. Yeah. Because they just see that acronym math. and they think science, technology, engineering, and math, right. that's what STEM is. Yeah. But it's really everything. Yeah. Uh, because none of those components exist unless they're all integrated with each other, so. Well, and I think it's a, it's a mindset too, uh, you know, science, technology, engineering, math. It, it's all the same kind of thinking with a different spin on it. Mm -hmm. It's still, that kind of analytical, problem-based, you know, problem-solving type of thing that um, the uh, students can actually go through that process, whether it's in science, whether it's in design, like my class, whether it's in the math, it's all the same kind of, of thinking for those students. So. Yeah. It's just the building and the making. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think is. when people say, I miss all that from my childhood because the kids don't do it now, but when you have STEM in your classroom, they're getting the building and making experiences of not being outside and playing like you did, like I did when I was little. Yeah. I was always outside all day long mm -hmm. yeah. on my grandpa's farm from morning to yeah. dinner. Yeah. So <laughs> you lived it. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. get the communication skills and yeah. that they get to the point where they want to tell the whole class about what they've done. So yeah. They're learning, they're speaking. Yeah. And, and um, that for me is a design brief. You know, yeah. tell me a little bit about the brief, and then you can kind of go from there. So, yeah. yeah but the other cool. thing that I I want to bring up because being in a school for years and years, I, I always ran into some roadblocks with other teachers saying to me, "I don't have time for that," and or "Why are you doing that?" Those kinds of things. So sometimes marketing that idea in your own school is difficult. So, do you have any strategies to help with that? Well, I did get my whole team to write books. So here's an example of integrating your literature with your science. And we, if you go to um, Student Treasures Publishing, you can get a free book kit. And in second grade, we write one book and we researched animals. And then they illustrated, they went through the whole writing process with the rough drafts and the editing and the re-editing and the re-editing and the re-editing. <laughs> so it's really important for them to learn that it's not perfect the first time because first and second graders think one and done. I'm done. Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. And that's the same thing with the whole engineering and design process. Yep. You're never really ever done. Right. No. It can always, always be improve it. So yeah. that's yeah. a great way to, but I know that you, you we all run into those roadblocks. Yeah. And it, it's it's difficult sometimes because you, you of course you think you have the right answer, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you just have to keep it simple. I mean, you can start get a teacher and embracing it by using the Brick Lab even in math, build a tower of ten so yeah. you can do your tens and your ones with mm -hmm. addition and subtraction, mm -hmm. and the kids can break them apart. So when they can see how it can be used in areas not just building, then they're more likely to want to have it in their classroom and use it. What what is the, the one of the things you mentioned prior to the webinar starting? We were talking, and it, what's the one thing that happens when you have all these activities going on in your uh, classroom? What noise happens? and mess. <laughs> noise and mess. <laughs> noise and mess. <laughs> so be prepared for noise and mess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> but if it's good noise and mess, yeah, there's, right. there's a difference. There's yeah. a real and, difference. And it's not noise, mischievous right? noise yes. and mess. It's learning noise and mess. Right. So yeah. that's something that I've seen in all the really active classrooms where STEM is uh, is a part of that process. There's a lot of interaction going on. They're talking about their projects. It, it, yeah. It's messy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. But it's good mess. Yeah. And they exactly. remember what they're doing. And it's problem yeah. solving mess stuff. Yeah. So. It is. And Jim, one thing I wanted to add on is um, you were asking about this question. I think it's critical that we are advocates and keep STEM as an important piece of the curriculum. Um, and, you know, we, we're out there being the cheerleaders and saying, yes, 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 this has to happen. Um, but administration looks at things a little bit differently. And, and they have to. They have to, and that's their job. Uh, um, but I think what we have to do is sit there and keep flaming that fire to make sure that it is always up front and important In for people front. to see. Yeah. yeah. So. It, it, but it, it is really important. And I've, I just know the kids love it. So that's okay. one way that they learn is if they love it, they're going to learn it. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so with that, uh, are there any questions Does that from uh, that you guys have any questions from Jill and Dory and Guy that have we gotten any questions at all? Rebecca, or Rebecca, your name is Renee, as I last recall. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you all for your input so far. Um, just a reminder, if anyone does want to still add a question, you can go to that control panel on the right-hand side of your screen and write questions there. Um, we do have one person writing in um, asking about your iSTEM session. So Jill and Dory, I know that you have hosted um, a strand of iSTEM through the IHO STEM Action Center about Brick Lab. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do in that strand? Um, and what this year is going to look like. Yeah, we've done it for, this is our fourth year, I mm -hmm. think, that we're going to do it, and we've always used the Brick Labs, and we do it in Twin Falls, and so it's introducing some, it's getting those teachers to embrace STEM and building and making with the bricks, and that's always been the easiest hook to get them in. Mm -hmm. it's, the hook. it's fun to see the teachers play and build with the bricks. They're so noisy and they don't even know they're being noisy because they're <laughs> completely engaged and we wanted the magic like, I'm valley. not finished building yet. Right. Right. They don't, they don't like, want us to move they're on. They're like the kids. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They are, they are. So we have to teach them some how to do some time management. And <laughs> the, since PCS is located in Boise, we wanted to introduce it to the Magic Valley because it really is a great classroom tool. And we teach um, how to incorporate writing mm -hmm. and reading and rockets and earthquakes and, it's and a lot of building class. with the bricks yeah. yes they build rockets they build towers and they have to pass our earthquake test and when they fall apart they get to redesign, redesign. it yeah. and try again and we visit the bridge there then and then we make the yes. have them come and make the bridges right. with the bricks and with the connects kids too mm -hmm. we got from PCS. Cool. And then this year we're incorporating the weather stations that I, I sound like I work for Civil Air Patrol. I don't, <laughs> but I did get a weather station from them as well. And one of my classroom jobs is meteorologist and they love it. It tells the weather before recess. And so we're incorporating that this year and we're trying to gear them towards the next generation science standards since I think all of Idaho mm -hmm. will be rolling it <laughs> finally, yes, tomorrow, mm -hmm. or next year. Yeah. So it's a great class, and we are fortunate here in Idaho that our legislature wants us to be doing STEM activities yes. as well. Yeah, yeah. from the, the new STEM Action Center in, in Idaho, and they've done a great job in promoting STEM and encouraging teachers and administrators and business to get involved with STEM. That it's a a great opportunity for our state. It is. Yeah. Another question in that strand. What kinds of grants or funding have you used to start your programs um, and to incorporate these STEM activities? We, our school district has a foundation and we've written um, grants to that foundation. Um, I've also used CAP Ed grants. They do grants for teachers. And I'll be getting some hands-on coding blocks this year with the grant I got from them this year. And then we've had um, the Idaho STEM Action Center. We've gotten grants from, and I've also done um, professional development through the grants that they have to to learn STEM 
activities. And Don't be afraid of the grants. Try them, resend yes. them. <laughs> Make sure there's no typos. <laughs> when we first met Jim, 13 years, years ago? ago? 15 years ago. Now. 15? 13, maybe. Well, he had a federal grant. <laughs> I know. Yeah. 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 He had a federal grant that um, our school all got brick mm -hmm. labs and we got the training on it and it was just amazing training. And then BSU continued mm -hmm. it for three more years. For three more years and we stayed involved with that as well. So we are really hooked on the brick lab and what it can do. And PCS has evolved with the science standards and has rewritten curriculum to match that. And they also have the regular teacher's curriculum per grade level that incorporates social studies mm -hmm. and English and math. So it really is an easy tool to get started with. Guy made a really important point earlier about the curriculum and that it is a something, a jumping off point because mm -hmm. it, it gets you started about thinking what you can do and what is there. And then, like most teachers, we always want to do it our way. Sure. And so it, it just is a, a start, a great starting point curriculum. Mm -hmm. So it it's is. it's not an end all, but it's a great starting point. And yeah. it's really helpful to have something to start with. Yeah. So you don't have to struggle to get it started. So. And then you'll start seeing how things just fit uh, in. Yeah. So one more question here. We heard at Brick Lab from Jill and Dory. Um, what products do you use, Guy, at your school? Ah, um, I have a full Fisher Technics um, lab. I do. <laughs> and uh, that was our first acquisition, actually, when we first started going. Uh, get our getting our STEM uh, program going is we bought the Fisher Technics along with the curriculum, and so that helped launch that piece of it. Um, Fisher Technics is very cool. Um, it's It appears to be rather intimidating with all the parts, but you can, uh, it's not difficult to manage um, if you what get the it? right student. Is it drones? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, no. It's the stuff that you're seeing in the back there. It's all the oh, uh, structural okay, stuff okay. that we do. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so no, uh, we haven't gotten into Our that yet. Our next grant. No. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Put it right through But uh, yeah, I Fisher Technics. I and the other thing, it's very robust. Uh, we're finding that it is. Um, I've now had it eight years, and it. The only thing that is happened to it is uh, parts have been picked up in the vacuum. So oh. um, that's that's about it. But the, it is a big. And program. the cool thing about the, it, it's a graduation process. Yeah, absolutely. We start with the bricks and the Fisher Tech allows so much more flexibility to build really complicated uh, engineering projects. Mm -hmm. And it requires all the math, the science, the language arts to explain it. Yeah. And it's really a pretty slick. And we have a, we have a whole product line and that will be on our website. You can check that with Discover Engineering, Discover uh, Drones, uh, just a number of things. but. Most of those products are Fisher Tech, so you can have an opportunity to look at those products as well. But yeah. again, it's nice to have something to start from because mm -hmm. it's really hard to think of how can I do this, but these will give you a, a great starting point. And you've been using it now for how many years? With eight, the years. eight years. Eight mm -hmm. years. Yeah. You're still going. Oh, yeah, we're still going. There's always new ways and new things to yeah. create. Yeah. And that's the beauty of the STEM curriculum stuff is it's just like you guys have said, there are never any solutions, really. It's always in a growing process, and yeah. everything's different every year. So yeah. mm -hmm. it's an, it's a, it is not a consumable product. Right. right. So right. you can use and it over and over, and it's tough. <laughs> and it's tough. <laughs> yeah. 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 You do very want robust to bleach your bricks. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> they get well used. <laughs> yeah. Well used. I think the other thing that I find with, with the Fisher Technic is um, they have a range of the products that the kids can start with simple machines, kind of go through that process, but at the very end, they can also have brains that attach to robotics, these and we yeah. can make some robotics out of it. Yeah. So it really does offer the kids and talk about differentiated learning, you mm -hmm. actually kind of sit there and can work with this material with students and to be able to kind of satisfy all levels. So it's cool. Very cool. So it looks like that's all the questions we have here. Is there anything else you want to add, Jim? Well, I'd, I'd mostly like to uh, thank everyone, the audience as well as the panel, 
it, it's always fun to visit with you guys, and I truly love to hear what you say about your classrooms. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> but if you want more, like for <laughs> all, your, all the classrooms. No. Yeah. I'm going to their classroom. <laughs> uh, but thanks for your, your your insights and how. And if you have any further questions uh, from our audience, get those questions to us, and we can get them to you to answer and. We'll get some answers back to you, but uh, it's really been a fun day. Uh, if you want more information, you each of our uh, areas have a specific salesperson that we'll list all those salespeople for their different regions, so you can contact them. And they they're great resources too to help come up with ideas for grants. We love you, Susie. <laughs> <laughs> this was not supposed to be a Susie webinar. <laughs> She's very helpful. Anyway. Well, was, thanks again for participating. We really appreciate you taking your time. Some of, this is your spring break. Thank you for coming in. Yes, thank you and for having it's us. It's great to have you here. So, thank and you. I would just add, if anybody wants to start a STEM, they might want to visit schools that have yeah, STEM programs absolutely. so that they can absolutely. see them in action. Yeah, it, there's school visitations are great to get ideas and how you can get things done. So mm -hmm. I would encourage that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you to all our panelists for being here, um, and thank you to our audience too for tuning in. If you're looking for more STEM insights um, beyond the resources that we've shared already, we have a series called Teacher's Point of View, where uh, real life teachers share their success stories and give tips to any other educators, like you're saying, that might want to start a lab or a STEM program. Um, in the most recent installment, we sat down with Kim Turner, who's a teacher in Liberty, Missouri, um, to talk about the incredible STEAM lab that she and her team set up. So take a look at that series, as well as some past webinars if you want some more insight for your makerspace, for camps coming up this summer, um, looking to integrate new things into your program. Uh, there's great resources there. Thank you again for joining us, and we'll see you next time.